Hello. So, uh, I've been uh, struggling with uh, <laughs> shugging uh, some uh, Seagate hard drives, um, specifically uh, the uh, 2.5 inch variant, so the well, desktop uh, or, or laptop uh, factor hard drives. Um, although they aren't really. Um, I had a lot of issues with it, so let's just go through the process here. Um, this is what you get out of it. It's a Barracuda drive. It's an uh, ST4000LM024. Um, well, and then I say it's not a laptop drive because if you look at, yeah, it's in this bracket because I tested it in one of my uh, servers. But you can see that it's like twice as tall as an, a regular SSD. Um, so it's not really a laptop drive. I wouldn't call it that. It would not fit in most laptops. Um, but actually, well, the process is very, very easy. Uh, there are no tricks involved uh, with Seagate drives, as there is with a lot of other manufacturers, uh, especially Western Digital has done a lot of things to make the drives harder to shock, especially their 2.5-inch drives. Um, they will remove the actual SATA connector from their drives and solder on like one of these um, USB adapters. This is a USB 3. Point, uh, something adapter that just slots on like so. And um, yeah, in the Seagate drives, that's just snapped on there and you can just pull it off once you shut the drive. And you have a regular SATA drive. So there's no triggery in that regard. Getting the cases open while slightly destructive, it's actually also quite easy. Um, you can see this one must be from the uh, the expansion portable. Um, and you'll see at least like half the clips are broken on this one. Then we see this from is from the uh, One Touch. Um, actually, other than it being slightly bent, it seems all the pins are intact and so on. So we can probably assemble this even maybe even well enough that Seagate wouldn't know that it's been opened. Um, but if your shocking drives do not count on warranty, some will sometimes you can get it uh, you can get it warranted and other times forget about it. Uh, we do this because it's cheap. It's um, about a hundred bucks for a drive like this. A little more maybe. Um, whereas if I were to buy it without it being in one of these enclosures, it will cost close to 150. And that's why we do it. Um, yeah, but like I said, I had some issues with this. It was not actually getting this open, getting the drive out. It was actually getting to to run. <laughs> um, and it turns out it was probably pretty much my, my, my own mistake, but it's just something to be aware of. Now, if, if you sh if know anything about shocking drives, as this process is called, when you take an external drive and pull the drive from inside it to use as an internal drive in your NAS servers or whatever. Um, for instance, Vistan Digital has some drives that where, where you need to cover up some of the pins on the SATA power connector, otherwise they will not function. Um, and yeah, I thought maybe I had a similar issue with these secret drives, but uh, in fact, I did not at all. Uh, it, it turned out to be the exact opposite. I have um, some SATA con uh, converters here, Molex to SATA, because I was running out of SATA connectors in my Unraid server. Um, and you might notice uh, right here, that's 
it's have one of the pins blanked off. There should be one more cable in here. That's because this does not actually have any 3.3 uh, volt power going through it. And that, that would be the last three pins on here uh, in this side, I think. Um, and that turned out to be a problem. And it took me a long time to figure out because it was the drives were working perfectly with this USB adapter, of course. Then when I put it in my Unraid server, it was this adapter it was not working. Then I tried to put it in a, in, in one of my HP uh, servers um, on the the, the SAS backplane there. It was working perfectly, and I pr tried putting it, it into a different uh, uh, system. I was working perfectly. Put it back into my Android server again. Actually, with a different adapter, but it had the same problem. It was working. And the thing is, these adapters—they've, uh, in my experience, they were perfectly fine with my all my 3.5-inch drives. But the 2.5-inch, not so much, or at all, in fact. And it was really weird because I did actually get it to kind of work. A couple of times it would show up in Unraid, and I tried to uh, clear it, uh, run the pre-clear uh, thing on it, and it was just it was, it will be really flaky. It will drop out, uh, and I looked into the Unraid logs. It said link down, link up. Uh, we we've, we've set the link speed lower, and yeah, <laughs> it 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 was not working as intended. That's for sure. And it just seems like if it's not getting the the, the 3.3 uh, volt power on on here, um, then it, it won't initialize correctly. Even though, and that's that's the funny thing. Um, yeah, I probably can't show this close enough. Well, maybe. You can see there's like right there. There's like. Three pins missing. That's all the 3.3 volt rails. They're missing on this. But if I stick it in a machine and doesn't supply that, it will not work. So I mean, this this controller or this USB thing here must do some. It must send some special signal to tell it to run in some other mode where it doesn't need that. Because it seems like if, it, if it's not supplied when you stick it in anything other than this it does need that otherwise this drive will not initialize it will probably not show up in your bias if it does show up in bias when you do get into your operating system it will drop in and out if it shows at all it will not function properly okay so that's mm, yeah i thought i should just share that knowledge so seagate uh 2.5 inch drives um, I mean I looked at what else they have of course they also have some SSD variants uh, I didn't go for those but we have um, these we've also got one called the <coughs> what's it called the basic and then there's one more expansion rescue or something um, I don't remember there's one more and then there's also like the PS4 port uh, game drive um, as well and they seem to be pretty much all the same the slight design differences but i expect if you buy the fourth terabyte variant in 20 in the 20 start of 2021 you're probably gonna get an st 4000 lm 024 drive that's an smr drive be aware this is not for like heavy load application where you're reading and writing to it 24 7. This is going in my Unraid server. It's going to store, it will be pretty much cold storage. I mean, it's for my Plex and whatnot. Occasionally, I'll play a movie off of it, you know, otherwise, it's going to be sitting idle like 99% of the time. So, SMR for my use case is perfectly fine. But if you're putting it into an not on RAID but an actual RAID array, it will be spinning a lot and so on. That's probably not a good idea, um, and you won't expect great performance from it. It's not bad. I compared it to uh, a hard drive I have in my 
uh, desktop here besides me, and I was yeah it was it was fine. Uh, it was a comparable performance at least now that it's new and empty. Um, so yeah, but just be aware, it is SMR, and yeah. I've just been pulling my hair on this. I actually moved my entire fucking uh, Unraid array to a different motherboard, CPU and RAM, because I was having issues. Partly because of this, that probably just made everything a lot worse. But also, I realized in the process of trying to get this to work, that my Unraid server would only actually boot half the time. The other half, it would hang in BIOS, and when it did boot. Then again, 50% of the time it would say it had single channel memory, and then 50% of the time it would say it had dual channel memory, um, which is not good. And I don't know if the issue is the motherboard, the RAM, or the CPU at this point. Um, so I threw in, threw it, <laughs> pull out the controller and all the disks and attached it to another system. It's up and running. It's running pre-clear on the disk right now, which you can maybe just see here. It's running pre-clear, so it's been doing pre-reads, and now it's erasing the disk. Everything seems to be absolutely fine. And as part of the whole thing, I also tried to do a low level format on one of these. Um, shouldn't be necessary but i mean if it completes without errors then probably know that disk is fine so i don't have to actually do all the pre-read and pre-erase stuff i can just clear it once let's put it into unraid um yeah so <laughs> that's my slightly frustrating experience with the uh, shocking seagate discs but it turned out it was probably mostly my fault and Apparently nobody else had this issue at all, so meh. Uh, okay, uh, too bad. Yeah, so um, that would be it for now. Um, yeah, just realized. Yeah, this isn't actually the correct adapter. This is a, a male to male that wouldn't work. But anyway, I have one that is female that I was using, so don't worry about it. Um, yeah. So uh, that's all. I hope if you if you're in doubt about shocking Seagate drives and you, or you are trying to and have had uh, issues, then maybe this can help you. Um, I just like I said. I was searching and searching and searching and nobody mentioned this specific issue that well it does most definitely need the 3.3 volts rails on here um, so connect it directly to the SATA coming off your power supply then it will probably work <coughs> but these these adapters maybe not so much so avoid these with, with these drives, but other than that, they're perfectly fine for, for shocking. Okay, thank you for now.